Hello everyone, welcome to another Monday movie, I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week uh, is an extension of last week, we talked about the Mental Ray subsurface scattering fast skin material. What that is is a, a souped up version of the subsurface scattering in Mental Ray. This week we're going to be talking about the physical shader, which is both a map so that you can apply it to other materials, and it's also its own material. It's been, it's been bundled into its own material, so we're going to cruise through that on the Buddha statue that we used last time. Let me show you what we're working with. I've already taken a render. It's just uh, illuminated in much the same way as it was last week. It's a very sharp, steep angle, and it's coming from behind. So we're going to see the light coming through the statue in the form of subsurface light scattering. Let's get started. I'm going to open up my material browser, and I've already applied this material to the statue. So I'm going to go ahead and click Ray Trace, and I'm going to select the subsurface scattering physical material. It's down here toward the bottom. I'm going to double click on it. So right out of the box, let's take a render and see what this looks like. So right off the bat, we don't see anything. The first thing that you should do when you don't see any effect is double check that you've got global illumination on. The fast skin shader doesn't require any kind of final gather or caustics or global illumination setup, but the physical material does. Make sure that global illumination is on before you get started on this. Now my scene is reasonably sized. I've set the decay to 3. You may have to set it to something else but make sure that your global illumination is set up and properly configured before you go any further. The next thing to mess with is the scale conversion factor. Just like last week, my scene is too big or too small for this material. Right now you can tell if you look down here, my scene is too small. So I need to turn my, so I need to turn my scale conversion factor up. From 1.0, I'm going to make it um, 10 to get us started. And let's take another render and see what this looks like. Now here's the important thing to notice. When you look at this render, you can see that there's a little bit of like rainbow pattern going on here. As soon as you start to see this pattern, you know you're on the right track. So do the same thing again. I'm going to turn my scale conversion factor even higher, maybe to um, 65. And let's go ahead and take another render. Perfect. This is exactly what we want to see at this stage of the game. These splotches are actually photons that are getting locked into the material. And once we start seeing these, we can start manipulating them. So I want to make these splotches uh, not as multicolored. I want them to blend together a little bit more and maybe penetrate a little bit deeper into this material before we start really tweaking the material into something that we want as our final render. So for starters, I'm going to um, increase the number of samples. So I want 32 samples. And I'm going to increase the number of photons that we're working with to 1024. Another thing on this material that's known to reduce that splotching effect is this scatter coefficients here. The absorption coefficient helps in the similar way to depth. It helps you push light into the object. The scatter coefficient helps to reduce the graininess. So I'm going to turn this to 0.65 all around. And let's see what this looks like with another render. All right, the splotchiness went down slightly, not enough though. And we got a few more photons. So now what we need to do is start altering the maximum radius of these photons, start getting them to blend together. So I'm going to turn it from 3 to 10. And let's take another render. All right, so the lighting is starting to really blend together, which is what we're looking for. I might increase the depth just a little bit to get these photons to blend together just a little bit more. Let's try it off at just two and see what that gives us. Not much, it just got a little bit brighter. So I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to turn the scatter coefficient down to 0.5 all around. And then we're going to start taking this material and turning it into what we want. So we're going to edit 
this material in the context of, of what we want. So I'm going to change the transmission color from white to a greenish, typical you know jade test render, just like that. Now what happens is when you look at this, we're seeing some blue splotches, some purple splotches, and some green slot splotches. And that's happening because the transmission color was white, and so it was getting diffused into all the other colors. But when we set the transmission color's hue uh, and saturation values a little bit you know, higher, it reduces the, dis the diffusion, that dispersion of the colors. So it's going to look much more stable now when I take another render. Great, it's all green. So finally, we can take this material and add a little bit of glossiness to it, a little bit more of a real material feel. So I'm going to click on this material swatch. I'm going to apply a DGS material map to it. Click OK. And for the diffuse color, I'm just going to pick a, another, another greenish color. Nothing too special. Click OK. And uh, the shininess, I might turn this down to uh, like 12 or 15. Let's go ahead and take a render. So this is looking just great. I mean, we can see the subsurface scattering up here in his hands, um, on his forehead, um, and down here on his Buddha belly. So, so now, once we've created this context, we can then tweak the material further, but I'm going to leave that to you. So to wrap this all together, what makes this material so powerful is your ability to control how the light penetrates this material. And the important thing to remember is you can start off just using the physical material, the subsurface scattering physical material, but don't get too engrossed in it because in the end, a lot of the transmission artifacts that we saw earlier, that splotchiness, the inconsistency, it gets lost in the material when you create that extra map, when you put in DGS or when we put in the diffuse map. So don't get too caught up on this. Until next week, happy rendering. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday movie. You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads at my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.